So I went to get a haircut today. Uh, usually, whenever I get a haircut, I've I've made an appointment uh, with my hairstylist Jen. Uh, I do it every sev every seven weeks. I get my haircut, and uh, you know, we'll make my appointment. You know, when I'm there, and uh, when my appointment's coming up, like either the day before or the day of my appointment, I'll text her to, to remind her or to make sure that the appointment is actually happening. Uh, because, you know, I, I'll do that. I do that because I'm a nervous person, a paranoid person. I want to know, you know, that I'm that it's going to happen, that my appointment is actually happening. I like to know those things. Because, you know, I'm a good customer. I don't just show up with no appointment. Although I did once. Because the one time that I didn't show up because I thought I knew when my appointment was. I thought my, my, I knew when my appointment was. I showed up and she's like, why are you here? Because she apparently forgot to write it down in her book. But seven weeks ago, my last appointment before this one. Before I entered the door, she sent me a text with my, with what my next appointment will be. The date and the time. March 11th, 4 p.m. I'm like, great. And I'm like, thinking to myself, I'm not going to text her. I'm not going to text her. And so this week when I knew the appointment was coming up, I'm like, I'm thinking to myself, she did, she did write it in her book, right? As I wasn't sure. And I'm like, I sh maybe I should text her. But then I'm thinking, no, shouldn't text her. You said you weren't going to. That's why she sent you the text with the appointment. You didn't have to text her because you knew when the damn appointment was. So I didn't text her. I didn't text her. And I got there today and... Um, she was expecting me, so I didn't have to text her. My, my anxiety about wanting to make sure I was going to show up there and have it actually be happening, it happened and it was great. That was, it was good. It was good. Like I even mentioned it to her as she was cutting my hair. I'm like, you notice I didn't, I didn't text you today because I got your text from seven weeks that you gave me seven weeks ago and she's like yeah I didn't get there was no reminder email today I'm like yeah there was no I mean reminder text there was no reminder text today that was yay so now I'm paranoid that she hates my reminder texts but then she sent me as we were there scheduling the next appointment she texted me what the appointment is so I'm not going to send a reminder text for the next one because I saw her write it down in the book so I, I, I am battling with stuff that I get anxious and paranoid about but there's still some things but like I I thought about texting her but I didn't because I trusted in the fact that she had sent me the text with her appoint with the appointment. So if she knew what the appointment was, she had written it in her book and then texted me. So I knew that my appointment was there. And she was expecting me. So the system worked today. Of course, my plan would have been shot to shit if I had gotten there today. Imagine if I had gotten there today and she would have been like, what are you doing here? I'm like, you... You texted me seven weeks ago what our, our appointment was, and it was today. But that conversation didn't take place. And it was a good haircut. <clears throat> like it usually is. Thank you. Oh, let's see. Um, I, I should mention this, because I'm going to keep my hair for as long as I can. I ain't, for those of you that want to know. 
And I'm never going to do that hair replacement, hair club for men. If that's still a thing, shit. I'm not doing that. That's not me. I'm not that type of person. I'm not some sort of fake douchebag that, that, that's so goddamn self-conscious about my hair. Once it's gone, it'll be gone. But right now, it's still there, and I'm holding on to it for as long as I can. Anyway, um, what else? I, uh, went with my dad for dinner tonight. We drove to Five Guys Burgers and Fries. I, I order it. I order it online, which is the way to go, which is even after this pandemic, I will still order my Five Guys that way and just eat it there at the restaurant. Love this pandemic. Um... Maybe I should tell that hairstylist story in the show I'm in this weekend. Anyway, I, uh, so I'm right. My dad's driving us to Five Guys tonight, and, um, it sort of dawned on me for some reason. I was looking at license plates on cars, and I'm thinking, oh, license plates, and I noticed, like, the registration on one, and I'm thinking, did I ever renew the registration for my car? Like, and then I remembered, wait, I I got the thing in the mail, the reminder in the mail. I'm like, okay, I'll do it at some point. Because mine is in February. The shortest month of the year. I don't usually forget. But this year I forgot. We'll just blame the pandemic on that. But as I was riding with them down there, I'm thinking, okay, when I get home, I'll get on my laptop and go to the Vermont website and renew online. They have a very easy renewal online process. So that was my plan originally. And then I thought to myself, wait, I have my, I have my phone here in the car let's just go online right now and and you know renew my car registration so we did like we stopped at the gas station first and I'm like doing the stuff on the, you know putting in my card information and do the payment set up the payment I did it for two years this year I don't ever usually do it for two years but this year I did it for two years because Next year, if I forget, it's okay, because I don't need to remember next year. But I need to remember in 2023 that I'll have to renew my car registration. If I'm still living in Vermont. I don't know. But, yeah. Um, so I, I, I renewed my car registr registration. But I just thought it was funny that I was thinking to myself, okay, I'll go on my laptop when I get home and renew my registration there. I guess that's how I'm kind of behind the times here. Still catching up to technology. That I can do it on my phone. So I did it on my phone. And um, then we got five guys and it was great. By the way, um, if you want a quick, if you want your order to be ready quickly at five guys, I'm going to tell you guys the secret. Um... Don't order french fries, because french fries are bad for you anyway. Holy crap, french fries are bad for you. And show up a few minutes after the time you said that you'd be there, because then the food is definitely made, and all they have to do is make your shakes. You're welcome. You're welcome. Um, keep saying, um, at least I'm not saying I mean or so. I did start that episode off with so so that sucks yeah let's see um so yeah uh like that's my tip for five guys and uh thought there was something else i always do this but i think that there's something there is something else um sort of motivational thing I want to mention a self-help thing because you know I've if you don't know I've I've been very big into like listening to self-help books and podcasts and stuff and 
I just, one thing I, uh, <clears throat> I've been trying to do a lot more of in the past year or so, within the past year or so, is if something, like, makes me feel uncomfortable, like, uncomfortable meaning either scared or uncomfortable or uneasy or I think, oh, this is going to be hard or, you know what I mean, some sort of example, some uncomfortable in some sort of way out of either fear or or, or something, or, you know what I mean? Like, I, 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 that motivates me to do it. I'm trying to do what makes me feel uncomfortable more. Because if you do what makes you feel uncomfortable, it's going to feel a lot better afterwards. Because, like, for example, like, I mentioned the car registration thing earlier like it would have made me feel uncomfortable to do it there in the car you know on my phone like because like I said I'm apparently old-fashioned but like I went ahead and did it and what happened it was freaking easy but I'm just I'm just trying to do more uncomfortable things but uncomfortable can mean scary, um, stressful, I don't know. <laughs> I think it's better to do things the, not necessarily the harder way, but like, um, you want to earn it. I want to earn it. And I feel like I can earn things better. I can earn it better if I do it. When it makes me feel uncomfortable. Because the more things I do that make me uncomfortable, the more better I'll be because of it. You know what I mean? What am I, what's another example I'm trying to find here? I don't know, but it was just, it just had me thinking that like, even like the littlest things, like, um, say if I'm at work and I need to like look up something and I'm like, I don't want to do this right now because it's going to take too much effort, you know? And then I'm like, wait a minute, if it's give, if it's going to take too much effort, then I definitely need to do this. You know what I mean? And then you do it and you're like, oh, I'm glad I did that. Got it out of the way. I feel better for it. Do the things that take effort. Do the things that make you feel uncomfortable. Do the things that make you feel scared. Not all the things that do make you do scared. Don't 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 bungee jump unless you really really want to. But, but yeah, I just I just think I'm I'm trying to do more things that make me feel uncomfortable, and I think everybody should try to do what makes them feel uncomfortable. Whether. Uncomfortable meaning, oh, it's going to take too much effort or it's going to be too scared to do it. You know, things like that. Do what makes you feel uncomfortable because you'll love yourself even more afterwards. Thank you so much for watching and or listening to the episode today. I really appreciate it. Please be sure to let me know what you thought. And that's the bottom line, if you smell what the McTigert Attack podcast is cooking.